Good evening, folks. Happy November. Here we are in November. Chuck's birthday month. My mother uh, said I was a Thanksgiving baby. She'd wished for a turkey and she got me anyway. Not going to spend a lot of time uh, talking. I got a lot of music today. I just want to thank all of you who've been participating in, um, in these videos as far as sending requests and um, and those of you that have been uh, contributing financially it's really been a blessing and it's really come in handy and so today um, I'm gonna do a little extra long show because I have several requests but uh, you'll notice at the heading of this uh, video after it says by request it says buried treasure and the reason for that there's a couple of reasons um, Number one, I'm going to do some songs today that are a little less well-known. You may have never even heard of the songs, uh, at least performed the way that I'm doing it. And also, a couple of the requests that I got um, presented a challenge because I didn't have a track for them. And so I'm getting a little bit better at um, getting... Uh, audio technology to where I can at least to a great extent remove a vocal or a, uh, a trumpet solo from a track. It's not perfect. It wouldn't be something that I would go into a recording studio to do, but anyway, uh, I hope you'll enjoy those songs. Anyway, I want to start off uh, right out the gate today uh, and, and sing a request for my friend Daniel Scurry. Daniel has been, uh, from the beginning of my request uh, videos, by request, uh, he's been a real supporter, sending me requests, and he's been a financial contributor, and Daniel, I really appreciate that. Uh, I just want you to know the song that you chose for me to do today, I haven't uh, sung this song in about 20 years. So, uh, uh, it's, if I'm a little rusty, I know you'll forgive me. Uh, here's a song that was written about 1945. It was written by a guy named Bob Hilliard. And Bob Hilliard, is all, he wrote a lot of songs. And uh, this song is kind of a novelty song. And um, he also wrote uh, Dear Hearts and Gentle People, uh, a big Bing Crosby uh, record. And uh, he wrote in the wee small hours of the morning. Imagine that. But anyway, here's a song that Frank Sinatra recorded twice, once in 1946 and again in 1960. I'm doing the 1960 version with the, the rockin' Johnny Mandel track from the Ring-A-Ding-Ding album on The Coffee Song. Brazilians, coffee beans grow by the billion, so they've got to buy those extra cups to fill. They've got an awful lot of coffee in Brazil. You can't get cherry soda, cause they've got to fill that quota. And the way things are, I'll bet they never will. They've got a zillion tons of coffee in Brazil. No tea or tomato juice. You'll see no potato juice But the plan is down and sad as they say no, no, no The politician's daughter was a cube of drinking water And was fined a great big fifty dollar bill They've got an awful lot of coffee in Brazil Girl and 
find out later She smelled just like a percolator Her perfume was made right on the grill Why they could percolate the ocean in Brazil they're ham and eggs, eat savor, coffee, catch them, gives them flavor. Coffee trickles way out, sell the deal. Why they put coffee in the coffee in Brazil? No tea, no tomato juice, you'll see. No potato juice, cause the plan is down in San as they say no, no, no. no. The local color serving coffee with a crawler. Duncan doesn't take a lot of stew. They've got an awful lot of coffee. An awful lot of coffee, man. They got a gang of coffee in Brazil. I tell you what, that's a hard song to sing because those words just don't stop coming. Anyway, thank you, Daniel, for that request. I don't uh, have a fancy teleprompter, so i got to put my words up here. Uh, it, and I keep them. These are all songs that I've sung in the past, but um, uh, I need a little refresher, maybe. Uh, here's a song that um, I got a request. Somebody asked me if I knew any Billy Joel songs. Well, you know, the cynic in me says, I don't do that stuff. Come on. But I thought about it, and I said, you know, I do know a Billy Joel song, except it's a Frank Sinatra version. And this is a song that a lot of people didn't realize uh, that Frank Sinatra recorded. Um, he um, had recorded an album called Trilogy in 1979. I guess it was released in 1980. And... Uh, it was three vinyl albums in one. And everybody remembers New York, New York. I mean, that was the big one from the album. It was a huge hit. But a lot of people don't realize that on one of the albums, he did songs that he either had recorded in the past or wanted to uh, record because he missed it. And Billy May wrote the arrangements for that album. And then the second album was called The Present. And The Present was made up of songs that were current uh, pop or recent pop songs. And Don Costa wrote the arrangements for that album. And then the third album um, was uh, called The Future. And it was weird. And it really, uh, it's not even, for me, it's not even listenable. Even though Gordon Jenkins did as great of a job as he possibly could have done. There's no coherency to me in the, in the album, so that's just my, my critical opinion. But anyway, uh, Frank recorded a Billy Joel song on that album with the Don Costa arrangement. I haven't done this, and I don't think I've ever sung it more than once or twice, but let's see, uh, let's see if we can get away with this one. Yeah. 
I love you And that's forever And this I promise from the heart I could not love you For some of you, that's real buried treasure. You never heard the Sinatra version of that Billy Joel song. Anyway, it's Harry James time. And uh, so let me do my commercial. Thanks for indulging me every week. Uh, my book, Harry James Trumpet Icon, it's on Amazon. Been on there since the 7th of May. And um, I've noticed sales picking up a little. You know, I'm not getting rich off of the royalties of this, and of course I, <laughs> I have to pay taxes on it, but it, I think it's going to be well worth it. But I continue to uh, get rave reviews and comments and, and emails from people literally all over the world that um, have read the book and share with me how the book has touched them. And... Um, in fact, the other night I, got, I, I was watching something and my phone dinged, you know, the messenger ding. And um, it was from a gentleman that lives in Sweden. His name was uh, Jack Anderson, I believe. And we had conversed for about a half an hour. Uh, he was telling me his uh, experiences with, with Harry James's music and how much the book had touched him and had some questions I was able to answer for him. So anyway, uh, if you haven't got a copy of this, get a copy on Amazon. It's available $21.99 in uh, paperback. It's available, I think, $9.99 for the ebook Kindle version. And uh, Christmas is coming. And uh, if you know somebody that would like to have this for Christmas, go on there and, and pick up a copy. I think uh, the person would really appreciate it. You might enjoy reading it, too. Anyway, Harry James Trumpet Icon. Well, this week... Uh, I'm going to do two Harry James uh, songs for you. The first one, it's an interesting story. I go into the detail in the book about this song. But in 1968, uh, this song became a pretty big hit for a group called Dennis Yost and the Classics Four. And um, the story I got was that the Classics Four were performing in Vegas, and this song hit. In fact, it got the number two on the Billboard chart in 1968. Harry James heard the song, and the lyrics touched him emotionally. Um, it reminded him, and, the, and he told several of us over the years uh, about the song and how it touched him, but it reminded him of his marriage to Betty Grable, had, which had ended in 1965, after 23 years. And so uh, he heard this song, and so he called up Rob Turk, his former lead trumpet player who wrote so many ar arrangements for the, the later Harry James bands. And uh, he asked Rob Turk to write an arrangement. And Rob 
wrote a gorgeous arrangement in the same key as the Classics 4 uh, song, record, and the key change was the same. And so uh, I don't have a track on Harry's version of uh, Traces, but I do have a track on uh, Dennis Yost and the Classics 4 version. So I'd like to play for you a song that, in fact, the very first night that I saw Harry James, he played this song twice. And I'd heard that he played it three or four times on a four-hour dance set. He just loved the song. And he recorded it twice, once in 19... 69 for Reader's Digest, and again in 1976 it was on the King James Version. And so I'd like to play for you a little bit of Harry James style trumpet on Traces. Traces. It is a beautiful song, no matter what style you do it in. And I wanted to, to um, dedicate that song to my friend Greg Carey. Greg is another guy that uh, is there every week, and he and he uh, has been contributing financially to uh, to my project here. And you know, every week, uh, some of the requests, I I end up having to go and purchase tracks online and. And so, anytime I get uh, any kind of a tip or donation, I really do appreciate it so much. You have no idea. And so, in the, uh, in the description below, you'll see an email address, chuckpardubigband at yahoo.com. And then you can send any request you might have. If it's something I just can't possibly do, I'll ask you if there's an alternative song you'd like to hear. But, also you'll see a PayPal address and also my PayPal email address. If you feel like 
you appreciate the, the music and the project and the effort that I put into it every week, um, then, you know, I'd appreciate it if you feel like sending me a, a tip or donation to the PayPal address. I, I really would appreciate that. So, Greg, this that song was for you. And uh, this song, <clears throat> I sent Harry James a, a double feature today on Harry James. Here's a song. Uh, uh, the last time I sang this song was probably 35 years ago at a piano bar somewhere uh, because I never have had an arrangement or, or a track for it. But, uh, you know, one of my friends that, that I really appreciate his love of this kind of music and music, uh, good music in general, is Paul Camerata. And um, Paul uh, is uh, the administrator of a Harry, uh, no, not a Harry James. He's in the Harry James group. By the way, folks, if you haven't joined the Harry James Music Appreciation Group on Facebook, why not? I mean, we're up uh, over 2,200 members, and there's all kind of interesting things on there. Uh, my friends Johnny Bruce and Denny Eilat over in Bristol, England, they, they created some discussions uh, and uh, a video, Johnny put up a video of him playing and beautiful pictures of Harry James model trumpets and mouthpieces. So go on Facebook and, and look up the Harry James Music Appreciation Group and, uh, you know, uh, uh, I'll, I'll add you to the group and I think you'll enjoy it. But Paul is the administrator of a, a Dick Hames fan club. Of course, Dick Haynes sang with Harry James for uh, the better part of two years, back in 1940 uh, through 42. And um, it's interesting that uh, much like All or Nothing at All was for Frank Sinatra when he was on the band, uh, Dick Haynes recorded several songs, but he never had a big hit record with Harry James. However, 1941... He recorded this song, and in 1944, when the record band was still going on, no musicians were allowed in the, in the studio to record. Uh, Columbia dug up this recording of Harry James and Dick Hames, and it became a huge hit for Harry and Dick. Now, I don't have a track for it, so what I was able to do, using my uh, ever-growing audio technology skills, I took the original record with Harry James and Dick Ames, and I did my best to remove as much as Dick Ames of Dick Ames as possible. So, uh, Paul, I'm going to attempt to sing a Dick Ames song for you and do the Harry James version of I'll Get By.
great record. And you know, if you go on YouTube, there's a, um, if you haven't seen it already, I mean, thousands of people have seen it. But I have, I, several years ago, I got permission from the Merv Griffin estate to post an entire uh, television show, the Merv Griffin show from 19, September 1977. And the guests were Harry James and his orchestra, Dick Haynes and Helen Forrest. And Dick came out and recreated his uh, song, I'll Get By With Harry. And you talk about the time just going back. And uh, it was like uh, they had never quit performing together. Anyway, um, Paul, I hope you like that if you get a chance to see it. Well, it's saloon song time, folks. You know, I started this tradition about a month ago. And uh, the more that I delve into the Sinatra saloon song genre, uh, the more that I find some interesting recordings and arrangements. Well, here's a song that would have been perfect for Frank Sinatra to record at any time during his career. But he never did. Now, he intended on doing it. Uh, in 1989, Billy May wrote an arrangement of this song for Frank to sing. And there exists one rehearsal tape that somebody made a bootleg of from uh, Bally's in New Jersey, uh, uh, Atlantic City. And Frank sang this with the orchestra in a rehearsal. And he wasn't close enough to the mic to really get a good reading of the whole thing. But it was you could tell that it would have been an amazing recording for Frank Sinatra even at that point in his life. So anyway, um, it was typical Billy May, just great. And so several years later, uh, Frank Sinatra Jr., uh, got the arrangement out and finally recorded the song. And so the, rec the arrangement is exactly the way that uh, Frank Sinatra Sr. would have sung it, but it was with Frank Jr. So I'm going to try to sing this song. Uh, and uh, this is the Billy May Frank Sinatra version that never was of Cry Me a River.
me love was too plebeian. You told me you were through with me. Remember, cause I remember all that you said. You told me love to the fear. Told me you were through with me. And now you say that you love me. Well, I just prove that you do. Come on. musical trivia buffs might be interested to know that um, on this track the tenor sax solo was played by Plaz Johnson. Plaz Johnson was a cornerstone of the uh, Capitol Records recording studios for decades and decades. Some of you might know him best as the tenor sax soloist on Henry Mancini's recording of The Pink Panther. Anyway, yeah, that's a great Billy May arrangement. I hope, I hope in your head you can imagine Frank Sinatra singing that. Well, this, uh, this next tune is going to be a challenge for me. Um, I've actually only played this one time in a rehearsal several years ago. And... Um, you know, I play it at home when I practice sometimes. Uh, but I was watching um, uh, a video a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I, first of all, I saw the documentary Never Too Late, which is uh, the Doc Severinsen story. And you know, Doc grew up about three hours from where I'm sitting. He grew up in Arlington, Oregon. And um, amazingly enough, Doc Severinsen is still at it at 93 years old. And not only was the documentary well worth watching, um, I got to watch it on, uh, I paid a ticket and watched it on the Bend, Oregon Film Festival a couple of weeks ago. But then um, a gentleman down in Atlanta got Doc to sit down for a nearly two hour interview on a Zoom or whatever they used. And it's amazing how sharp Doc Severinsen's line still is. And his memory is amazing. And he, uh, he goes into about a four and a half minute story uh, about Harry James and how much Harry meant to him and just how great Harry James was. And of course, Doc, when I was an 18 year old boy, uh, I say that because I weighed about 119 pounds. I was still a boy. But when I met Doc, and we chatted in his dressing room in 1972. He told me that for 25 years, as far as he was concerned, there wasn't a trumpet player on planet Earth fit to carry Harry James' trumpet case through the door. But anyway, um, last week, my friend Ron Krauss had requested um, uh, I Remember Clifford. And then I had some technical difficulties, and hopefully, uh, in fact, let me, I'm going to leave the, the, this for just a minute. I want to make sure that the video camera is still working. Hang on there, folks.
Yes, it is. Last week it timed out or the battery died or something happened. Anyway, uh, so Ron Krauss, uh, I've chosen another even more difficult uh, trumpet solo for me to play. And uh, I'm going to do my best to get through this. But this is a marvelous Tommy Newsome uh, arrangement of Georgia on my mind. And it's not easy to play it as lyrical in all the registers as Doc does. This is still something he plays when he plays a concert somewhere. He still plays the same arrangement. But I was able to remove as much of Doc off of the uh, Tonight Show band track as I could. So I'd like to play a little... Um, George on my mind, accompanied by the Tonight Show Orchestra. So, uh, wish me your best, please, folks.
probably never see this, but that's for you, Doc, for what you've uh, meant to all us trumpet players for all these years. What a what a fabulous musician. He's a great guy. Um, anyway, Barry Treasure. Uh, you've seen some examples of some Barry Treasure. Me, me bringing something to life that, uh, that didn't exist as far as track. Um, so once again, uh, if you want to give me a request, send me an email to chuckpartybigband at yahoo.com. And uh, if you feel like you want to contribute to the little project, keep it going. Uh, my PayPal address and my uh, old brown eyes at gmail.com are down there and feel free to drop a quarter in the in the bucket uh, but here's the last example of buried treasure I gotta get a drink of water excuse me here's a song that um, once again Billy May 1988 uh, Billy May wrote uh, a couple of arrangements for some singles. Uh, at least that was what the intention was going to be. And uh, there was a possibility of, of um, Frank Sinatra recording another album with Billy May. Of course, it never happened. I wish it had. But anyway, uh, this is a song that Frank first recorded on Columbia back around 1947. And um, and then Billy May came along, and you know when Billy, I know I talk about it a lot every week. Billy was a, a mu he was a magician. He was a, a master at adding setting a mood and making it swing and making uh, the musicians making it something that, that was interesting for the musicians to play. For example, when I when I sang "Cry Me a River," if you listen to that. There's a couple of places in there where Billy May quotes uh, a clip from Marty Shaw's theme song, Nightmare. Uh, but on this one, Billy wrote a, just a swinging chart. Of course, there's no track on it. Uh, the, the record was never released as a single. It came out on reprise several years later when they were opening the vaults up a little bit. Um, and so... Uh, I'd like to uh, close this week's uh, by request video with a Billy May Frank Sinatra version of My Foolish Heart. It's like a lovely tune Beware my foolish heart How white the ever constant moon Take care my foolish heart There's a line between love and fascination That's hard to see on an evening such as this For they give you the very same sensation When you're lost in the passions of a kiss your lips are much too close to mine Beware my foolish heart But should our eager lips combine Then let the fire start For this time it is a fascination On a dream that will fade and fall apart It's love, this time it's love My foolish heart Your lips are much too 
close your mind Beware my foolish heart But should our eager lips combine Then let that fire start Oh, this time is a fascination Or a dream that will fade and fall apart It's love, this time it's love, my foolish heart Isn't that a great recording? Oh, I forgot Bill Miller had a tag there. Uh, now, uh, some more musical trivia, folks. Uh, there's a trump muted trumpet solo on that recording, and uh, it it was from it was a trumpet solo by the great Jack Sheldon, uh, who who left us on the 27th of December of 2019. He's been gone for almost a year, and. People don't realize with all of the comedy and the bluster and the antics of, of Jack Sheldon, he was one of the most versatile musicians, really, that the recording industry has, has seen in the last half century. So anyway, Jack Sheldon on My Foolish Heart. Anyway, thanks, folks. I hope you enjoy this, uh, warts and all. I, I've told you week after week, I don't go through and edit stuff. Uh, I, I give you what I got, and I hope that you enjoy it. All of you guys that are uh, contributing and sending requests, thank you so much. God bless you guys, and I hope you have a great week. Until next time. Bye-bye.